Hi everybody, this is Neil Malik from NAC Training. And earlier today, I was doing a webinar, an important question came up. The question came up, how do I auto print attachments in Microsoft Outlook? Now, you can, with a rule, print out the emails as they come in. However, print attachments requires a little bit of scripting to make this happen. So what we're going to do in today's session is we're going to envision a world in which we receive an email and then we judge that email. We figure out whether that email qualifies in our mind to have its attachments printed. So there are a lot of questions that we could ask. Questions like, uh, who sent us this email? What is the email about? When was it sent? What kind of attachments does it have? Etc. And if those questions come back as being true, that the right person sent it to us, or the right attachments were added, then of course we'll send those attachments to the printer. Now to make this happen, we're going to need a three-step process. The first process is to have a script that knows how to print attachments. Don't worry, I've taken care of that for you. And I will be including uh, links at the end to show you the places where I got the different pieces of the script so I can combine it together into a useful end product. The second thing we need to do is we need to go into Microsoft Outlook, put that script into Outlook, copy and paste it into Outlook, and make sure that everything is set up appropriately so that it does the job it needs to do. And finally, we need to create a rule that's going to actually say, hey, do you see that script over there? Please run that script right now. Because the rule is what's going to do the judgment. It's going to say, ah, I see this person sent us this email. It has attachments on it. So I'm going to now run that script that's copied into Microsoft Outlook. For those of you who'd like to follow along, you can download today's script from bit.ly slash Outlook print attach. If you've never used a bit.ly address before, make a quick note. It's capital O in Outlook, capital P in print, and capital A in attach. And that's actually an important piece. It has to be capitalized appropriately. You'll find a text file there that I'm using to copy and paste. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. First thing I'm going to do is open up this text file that I've just talked to you about. As you can see, it's a little script called attachment print, and its job is to go off, take the files that are attached to this email, and save them into a temp folder on your hard drive. Once those files are saved onto your hard drive, then it's going to go through those attachments and determine whether or not it should print them. As you can see here, we've got a little for each attachment. For each attachment that's on that email, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what file type it is. It's going to take the last four characters of the file name and say if it ends in this, then it's this type of file. As you can see right here, we use those last four characters right here. We say in this script, I would like to find anything that ends in .doc, .docx, .xls, .xlsx, .ppt, .pptx, and .pdf and I'd like to print those. Note that anything that's excluded from this list won't get printed. That's also very important. If you wanted to print anything that wasn't included in this list, just make sure that you create a four letter string that adds on to this. And if you didn't want to print something, like maybe you didn't want to print a PowerPoint presentation, you could remove those extensions and it would not print those possibilities. Now that we've got the script, let's figure out where to put that script. I happen to be in Outlook 2016, but these steps are exactly the same for 2010 and 13 as well. The first thing we have to do is we have to get the developer tab up on the top of our screen. As you can see, I don't have a developer tab right now, so the way that I get it is I go to the ribbon at the top, right click on it, and choose customize the ribbon. By using Customize the Ribbon, as you can see, there's a checkbox that says Developer on it. I'm going to click that checkbox to enable the Developer tab and click OK. OK, so we've got a Developer tab at the top of our screen, and you can see that on the far left-hand side, we have Macros and Visual Basic mentioned. 
you'll also want to take a moment here under macro security and figure out whether you want to have your macros enabled or disabled. So I'm just going to go ahead and let all macros have notifications pop up as they try to be executed. Then I click on the Visual Basic window on the left, and as you can see, a new window for this Outlook session, note that entry over here on the left, gets added. It's basically a blank sheet of paper. This is where you're going to paste your script. If this isn't up by default, simply double click the entry This Outlook Session here on the left, and it will open in the middle part of your screen. So now we go grab that little script. I'm just going to do a quick selection of the whole thing and copy it and then paste it into this window. The only thing you really have to worry about at this point is making sure that nothing turns red. If you see any red in this window, you know that something went wrong. As long as all you see is blue, black, and green, then you know everything is just fine. There is one more step that we have to do here. We have to enable something called the scripting engine. So we're going to go to Tools up at the top of the screen and choose References. And on this References window, we have to scroll down to the section labeled Microsoft. There we go. And specifically, the Microsoft scripting library, or scripting runtime, excuse me. The Microsoft scripting runtime needs to be enabled by clicking the checkbox and then click OK. Once this is all done, once you've done the copy and paste in, edited this line if you felt like you needed to, and turned on that reference for the Microsoft scripting runtime, now it's time to save and close the window. So the script is there for you, and you want to go ahead and use that script. The way we're going to use the script is by creating a rule. To, click, to create this rule, I click on the Rules drop-down menu on the Home tab and click on Manage Rules and Alerts. And what I want is to have a new rule print attachments from somebody. So I'll click on New Rule here on the left-hand side and choose Apply Rule on Messages I Receive. All emails that come into my inbox are going to be judged as to whether the criteria is true or not. I click Next. What is the criteria that you have in mind? Now yours might be very different from mine. I'm going to say that Ravi Silva is a very important client of mine, and if he sends me attachments, I want to print those attachments. Yours might be some sort of automated system that you know when that automated system sends you an email, you have to print out the files that are attached to that. Or it might be your boss, or could be just about any criteria under the sun. So for me, in my situation, I'm going to click the checkbox that says from people or public group, click people or public group down here at the bottom, and put in the email address that I'm interested in. And I'm also going to come down here where there's a checkbox for which has an attachment. So any emails that come in from Ravi Silva that have attachments are going to have something happen to them. Again, these conditions aren't the part that's going to be the same between all of us. The conditions are what's going to be unique. It's on the next panel, if I click Next right here, that we're all going to do the same thing. We're going to click the checkbox for Run a Script. So what do you want to do with the message? I want to run a script. And the only way this works is if you've copied and pasted the script in the previous step of the exercise. So I click on the words a script down here, and I note that that print attachment script that I just copied and pasted in is listed right here. I click OK, and as you can see, it says this Outlook session dot attachment print. That's exactly what I just copied and pasted in, so I'm looking pretty good. Click Next. This is where exceptions come into play. If you can think of any exceptions to this rule, feel free to build them at this point. But I can't think of any, so I'm not going to do anything right here. Then click Next and give it a name that means something. I'm going to say Print Attachments from Ravi Silva. And then click Finish. 
This window that pops up just is letting you know that if Outlook isn't running, then the rule isn't going to run either. Click OK and click OK. So now it's time to test whether or not this works. So I happen to have the Ravi Silva email account. I'm just going to click on new up here at the top of the screen and send a new email And of course, I need to attach some files to it. Now, I've made a big deal in the previous step of the exercise that it included .pptx as a file extension that it would print, but it did not include other things. So I'm going to now attach both a PowerPoint presentation, and as you can see right here, I'm going to attach a text file as well. So based off of my script, the way that script is written, it should print anything that is a PowerPoint presentation, but this text file that I've also attached should not get printed. Let's see whether it works. I click the send button and I wait for that to work or not work in my inbox. So I should get a new email from Ravi and it should instantly send the PowerPoint presentation to the printer. So as you can see, it opened the PowerPoint presentation in PowerPoint. Not only that, but uh, it, see, it says right here that it's trying to send that to my OneNote account, which happens to be my default printer. So you can see there that it's done exactly what I want it to do. It hasn't printed the text file, but it has attempted to print the PowerPoint presentation.